Tim Parry, who is the Director of Communications, Engagement and Brand at Alzheimer's Research UK. Hi, Tim. Hello, Adam. Are you receiving me okay? I am. I love your living room. That, that, that log burner looks awesome. Thank you very much. Obviously, I've taken you to the most glamorous room in my house. <laughs> but thank you. Now, I, I would, uh, speaking about decoration, I should be wearing one of your T-shirts as well, which I did order. But it's it, not, I said, I, not right. You know, I had a quick look last night and saw that they were all just showing us. They literally just turned to dispatch today. And I thought, oh, no. Um, no well, I'll wear it with pride next week. Sorry. Yeah. So I, I mentioned before I got I, I got T-shirts made. Um, so Tim's joined us because, um, of course, as everybody knows um, who's watching today, the whole purpose is to raise money for Alzheimer's Research UK. And this kind of event came about because I think anybody who's on social media or, or even seen the news, to be quite honest, knows that the devastating effect that COVID's had across the board uh, on charities as well. Um, much of the fundraising events have been given and I kind of, I've still been working, but I wanted to do a bit. So I've done some cycling for Alzheimer's Society, but I uh, didn't want to keep cycling. Uh, <laughs> no, I did want to keep cycling, but I realized you can't keep asking people to give you money for doing the same thing over and over again. So I wanted to do something a bit different. And I'd been doing some webinars for Dementia Researcher and NIHR, which is my day job and then decided to, to, to see if people thought this was a good idea. And I got such an amazing response from researchers that um, I had to make it happen. Alzheimer's Research UK is a charity. So Tim, thank you very much again for joining us. My pleasure. We've got, we've got like 100 people watching. It's good. <laughs> it's been varied, it's up and down. About 500 different people watched, have watched so far today. So thank you everybody for us watching. Uh, Tim, could you introduce yourself? Uh, I can actually, before I introduce myself, can I just immediately say thank you, Adam, for, you know, you could have just done a sponsored gaming session. Or <laughs> decided to do 12 hours uh, of interviews, which is uh, pretty hardcore. So we're really blown away. And obviously, it is, there's so much discussion chipping in on, on social media. So there's a lot of people that have, uh, that you've definitely intrigued about uh, your, your fundraising today, but we're, I'm, we're grateful for you. Um, supporting Alzheimer's Research UK in this, in this challenge. But uh, who am I? I am, um, like you say, I'm a Director of Communications uh, Engagement of Brands, Alzheimer's Research UK. Um, I have reached just about my 12th anniversary of working for this charity. Um, so I've really grown up with it. I've been working there since I was about nine years old and a um, huge amount has happened in the time um, that I've been at AI UK. Um, and, uh, well, I mean, we'll, I'm sure we'll talk in the next few minutes about, you know, the impact of this situation, but um, it's been a fantastic period of the, of the last few years of, of, of growth for, for AI UK. You know, we, each year has been like, you know, what amazing new initiative can we get going this year? You know, what, you know, how can we uh, increase provision and what, what more can we do? And it's been a real privilege to be in that position for so long of, of thinking about opportunity and, and possibility and, you know, I very much hope, as I'm sure everyone that you talk to today hopes that those days can can come back as as quickly as possible. I mean, that's a, that's a tricky one. I suppose it is nice to be in that position of going from, you know, having sufficient funds to be able to think about what new things you could do, what needs funding to be able to do extra work beyond what you did, and then tricky to go back because nobody ever wants to say, oh we're going to put in less money this year, right? I mean, everybody wants to always say, we progress. is this the first time in, in the last decade that you've potentially had to look at winding back rather than going forward? Yeah, absolutely. We were taking really big leaps forward. Uh, well, just for a bit of context, I suppose when I joined in 2008, um, I think we were about maybe four to five million pound charity and we, and we only response mode funding. So, um, we're only doing um, one grant round a year with a limited number of programs. And I think I was probably the sort of 15th or 16th person through the door at, at Alzheimer's Research Trust as it was then. Um, you know, fast forward 10, 11 years to just before this, this situation and um, we've got a 40 million pound charity now with a huge variety of uh, reactive and proactive programs, sporting institutes, sporting um, you know, hundreds, thousands of, uh, of research scientists in this country and increasing overseas as well. 
um, investing in the Dementia Research Institute alongside Alzheimer's Society, um, our drug discovery programs, you know, just incredible um, things we've made possible over the last few years. So yeah, absolutely every year has been ramping up and incredibly exciting, important new initiatives have been kicking off every year. So this is absolutely the first time um, that we've had to, you know, look at what, what, we, what we can do. And then unfortunately, as, um, well, it's, it's, I mean, it's, it'd be unfair to say you're not still doing everything, are you? Because I think what, you, what from what I've seen, you, you just looked at how you can tighten your belt to continue to fund, to, you know, internally looking at what you can strip out, not externally, which is brilliant for a charity, not, you know. Yeah, well, a bit, a bit of both, Adam, I suppose. I mean, of course, you know, you look at your, your budget for the year and you immediately look at anything that was perhaps a bit more discretionary and that gets pulled. And, you know, we have absolutely prudently looked at our, our, our cost base in terms of how we operate as an organisation and we've used the furlough scheme, as I know, um, you know, many charities and so well, companies all over the, the country have done. So we've done everything within our power to try and, you know, protect um, the organisation and then uh, in turn to to protect the provision that we can make towards our research programs. I think in terms of what we are funding, um, you know, our absolute, um, what is of paramount importance is, is protecting the programs we've already got underway and are already funding uh, and looking after the, the things like our drug discovery institutes um, to which we have big obligations and the, uh, and the DRI as already mentioned. Um, but, you know, we have had to make some difficult decisions and of course we're not alone. Uh, there are plenty of other charities that have had to make incredibly difficult decisions, you know, the really worst decisions when it comes to their, their actual existence. So we have had to, uh, unfortunately, um, uh, cancel the uh, planned funding round or response mode funding round for this year. We won't be doing one in January either. And all eyes are on you know, how quickly we can reinstate those response mode funding programs, because that's where all the fantastic ideas and new talent and new blood comes from, from the research community. And um, we, want, we want to get back there and support as much of it as we can. And how's the, I mean, how has the government responded? Because obviously I saw, in, you know, the government's been pretty good at supporting other industries like catering and, and service industries and, you know, self-employed people and the furlough scheme. Has the, has the government put its hand in its pocket to keep this going? Well, in as much as we, we benefit from the furlough scheme and that helps with our cost base and that keeps the charity healthier, which means in turn we can, we can keep um, as much money as possible going to the research programs. But there's nothing specific um, from government around um, protection to mention research as it stands. And actually there's a lot of, uh, uh, a lot of talk about this on, on social media and the news at the moment. And we had a, um, a letter uh, published um, uh, with our friends at Alzheimer's Society, we did a joint letter that was signed by, well, lots of people actually that, that, that will be appearing on your, um, uh, your podcast during the course of, of the day, who signed an open letter through to the government, imploring them to um, continue with uh, their dementia moonshot. So this was their, their promise, or the um, Conservative Party's promise, which they brought into government to um, aim for the moon, you know, to really try was and make... Double, double in, was it doubling? I can't remember, the commitment in December. Yeah, more, uh, I think it was more than doubling the, the, the funding, actually. But the, the, the details of what that funding should cover and um, um, you know, how that money would be best invested and what programmes would, would um, best benefit from it uh, uh, are not yet clear. So you know, what we're doing is um, making sure that that pledge to bring that increased funding is not forgotten about in the first instance, but also um, at Alzheimer's Research UK are doing a lot of work around uh, recommendations on, on really... Uh, where that uh, government investment could, could have the most benefit. I'm continuing to hold into account because I guess that's the risk, isn't it? I mean, with the economy, you know, having taken a big hit off the back of COVID, I guess the, the concern is, and I asked Alzheimer's Association this at their conference a couple of weeks ago, saying, oh, are you worried about funding? And they were, no, no, it's fine. It's, it's committed, it's government funding, it's promised. Um, I, I felt less certain in the UK. I got a feeling that, you know, if some things didn't go well, it... it that funding isn't so definitely coming. I mean, manifesto commitments are. <laughs> yeah, they're one hundred percent certain, aren't they? Manifesto commitments. But look, I, you know, I, I, I understand what you're saying, and it's, um, you know. Well, I can say, I think you're doing an amazing job with the money that you that you have got, and well done for keeping at least. You know, you've not taken any money back from people. Anybody that got 
that had been promised, you've managed to meet those commitments, and that's 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 great. And if the government can kind of help out to, because what we don't want, I guess, is a year of mist. All the funding rounds that would have come out this year would just be, a, and that would be a, a year missed, right? I mean, we're just it'll put us a year behind. Yeah, um, well, it's more than a year, isn't it? Because I think it's yeah, exactly. Better. I mean, great that they've funded all the COVID. Re I mean, we've had quite a lot of people who've suddenly turned their hand to dementia and COVID, so it's great to see that funding coming through. But that's not helping here. So, what other stuff does ARUK other than give money to researchers? You do a lot of things in yourselves as well, don't you? Yeah, well, obviously, research is um, is our primary focus. It's our middle name, Adam, as you know. But um, so my teams um, uh, are involved in helping public to understand what goes on in dementia research in its entirety, and even getting them involved uh, in studies themselves through through um, initiatives like Joint Dementia Research, and we run an info line that helps people to understand what goes on in clinical research, and you know, to get people to get the public involved themselves. Um, but a large part of what my team does is uh, liaising with the media to make sure that when dementia research is reported in the press, um, we try to uh, you know, be the voice of evidence and the voice of reason in terms of what findings are being shared by the press, because sometimes they can get a bit excitable about the outcomes of um, particular research studies. So we have a role in, uh, in commentating on those. We also run you know, large numbers of campaigns ourselves, uh, all directed towards helping the public better understand the nature of dementia, the diseases behind it, the impact that these diseases are having, uh, and what role the public can play in, in overcoming them. That's brilliant. Well, I'm, honestly, I know you're busy. I'm really grateful for your finding time to talk to us. I mean, the whole purpose of today, I mean, obviously, is adding to what you do in terms of sharing information about research. Hopefully, maybe some of the people watching will realise that it's not, as Chris said right at the start, that you know, researchers don't just want to take a piece of his brain and experiment on it. We, there's a whole range of different types of study and we've got people represented from all different areas of science today. So hopefully it'll persuade some of the public to get involved perhaps, but also importantly, as I think we've highlighted, the money that you give today will really help Alzheimer's Research UK. Um, thank you very much, Tim. 15 minutes go so quickly. It does, doesn't it? Thank you, Adam. You're a legend. Thank, thank you very much for, for joining. And uh, everybody, this is Tim. Uh, there were a couple of questions which I'll put on Twitter to you, uh, Tim. Thank you very much for joining.